Whoa! Woo! Man, I knew this game was tough, but I didn't know it was gonna be this intense. man, how's it going? Uh, hey dude, how the fuck did you get into my house? You left your door unlocked, silly Billy. Okay, maybe I should lock my doors next time. Well anyway, uh, how's Spider-Man Mars Morales going? Oh, um, uh, Mars Morales, it's um, it, it, it's a pretty good game. Yeah, I, I like it. You know, it, it's a nice follow-up to the previous game, which was Marvel Spider-Man, which I believe that came out in 2018, I like to believe. I can't 100% remember it, but yeah, I absolutely- Well, hey, at least you're not playing a, uh, <clears throat> a Disney tie-in game, am I right? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? And why are you saying it like that? It, it, it almost feels like I am going to be reviewing a Disney tie-in game. Yep. So something's happening. I can, I can feel it, and and, and it's not those uh, the, those garbage trucks, by the way. Well, here you go. Disney Pixar Cars the video game. Wow. Now, when I saw this movie back in 2006, I absolutely loved it. It was an interesting take this time around for a Disney movie where you watch cars race on speedways for the Piston Cup, and they all have emotions and motivations as well. A cocky airhead rookie only cares about winning, then learning to understand that there's more to life than just winning. It was filled with a ton of cool characters, and Mater was there too, but Looking back, I had a feeling that this was all just marketing from Disney's side to create merchandise, especially having toy cars. The first movie was good, the second movie I thought flopped, and the third one, while different from my expectations, but at least they went back to their old roots to why the first movie was successful in the first place. And what were the odds when Disney decided to give the green light for a video game based on the movie? Since you have cars and video games coming together into one, of course you have to make a racing game. It was pretty much written from the stars right from the very beginning. Now, I loved this game as a kid. I would spend so many hours playing through this game and crashing into other cars as they drove by. What's up, Doc? And I think you know where I'm going with this. Because I played this game back in the day as a kid, that usually means now as an adult and coming back to a childhood game, I'm either going to like it or absolutely hate it because I'm now older and slowly getting wiser. So let that be a lesson to you all. Once you become an adult, everything fucking sucks. But anyway, I guess the only way to express how I feel about Cars the video game is to... Well... You know, play the game. Also, just keep in mind that I am using my PlayStation 2 emulator for my gameplay recording for the first time in this channel, and it is still a work in progress. Just thought I'd let you all know on that. Cars the video game offers story mode, and we'll get straight into that. For difficulty settings, you can either choose full size or compact, and I went for full size because I ain't a wuss. The story starts with Mater welcoming us to Radiator Springs Grand Prix, which allows recognizable cars and some new faces to join in the fun. After winning the race, it all turns out that Lightning McQueen was dreaming all about it. After waking up, it was time to start training for the big leagues to win the Piston Cup. And that's pretty much it. You compete in races to earn trophies, and with enough trophies, you'll be able to race in speedways. Keep doing this a few times and you'll manage to beat the story. As for how the plot goes, it's pretty simple. I guess I can't really complain too much because realistically, the game is more focused on the gameplay side rather than the story. It does follow the events after the Cars movie, and in a way, this game does feel like a continuation almost feeling like Cars 2. 
but it's when you realize the plot here is way better than the actual Cars 2 movie. I will add that the story is a bit all over the place with different side stories, and I would have preferred the story to be focused with just one objective. The in-game cutscenes are well done, but I can't help to think that something is missing. No, it wasn't any ordinary race. It was the Radiator Springs Grand Prix, and you were in it, and Doc, and Mater was the announcer. Yeah, I think the majority of the cutscenes feels very quiet without some background music. It could have made those scenes more alive than just feeling like you're in an awkward conversation. But if there is something good here, is that all the actors are voicing their characters in this game, which I think is pretty cool. Every character you know and love is here. Lightning, Chick, Doc, Sally, Ramon, the twins, Mac, and many more. You also have new characters as well, which I do appreciate as it opens up possibilities for interesting personalities. It's almost like you can see these new characters and they blend into the Cars universe pretty well. Ah, uh, was that supposed to be a foreshadow on Papyrus's laugh from Undertale? <laughs> the graphics are fine for its time. They're not the best good looking visuals for what I've seen in other PS2 titles, but you can see some cool easter eggs that references the movie, so that's nice. But anyways, time to get into the gameplay, starting off with the open world exploration. Cars the video game offers you an open world sandbox map to look around Radiator Springs. You have three areas to explore. You have Radiator Springs, of course, then you have Ottoman Valley, and finally, you have Taflin Pass. It's cool to check out the landmarks from the movie, and you can visit areas like the small town, the oval area, the waterfall area, and that's about it. I am not the biggest fan of the open world here, as to me, it feels quite empty. And I know it's located in a desert, so it's supposed to be empty, but what I mean is there's not much detail and it feels like it's not 100% completed. So on your compass, you have races and minigames. All of the marked ones will be labeled as white, as in you haven't completed it yet. But once you manage to do so, then it'll be highlighted by a color, signaling that it's already been completed. What I don't like about these is some races and minigames share the same marker and I find myself at times accidentally clicking on a race I've already done. Then I had to back out, and therefore I'm wasting minutes of my time. It could have probably been my fault that I didn't read properly, but at least I could have added individual markers instead of sharing the same one. Another thing I found weird is that while exploring, I don't see any roads or collectibles on my compass, but yet in a race, somehow there is a road showing me where to go. It feels a bit off to me. Maybe I'm nitpicking, but I do like to see what direction I'm taking, especially if I'm going to explore around the sandbox. Overall, besides the easter eggs, there's nothing too interesting to check out. Well, hey, look on the bright side, at least I can crash into other cars driving by. Hey, Philip! Throughout the game as well, you'll come across these lightning bolts you can collect. They're pretty much your currency for the game, and if you have enough, you can unlock characters to play, artwork to see, and movie scenes to witness. I like the unlockable stuff you can buy, and you can even purchase and play as Chick, Hotwing, and the King, to name a few. So far, we are not off to a great start in terms of the gameplay, which is pretty strange because of how much I loved this game back in the day. But anyway, let's get our bloods boiling by drinking some caffeine and checking out some races. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel, buddy. So the racing gameplay is pretty simple. You have three laps and you try to accelerate to win. Throughout the races, you can also power slide the sharp corners, you can drive backwards as you learn that skill from Mater, and later on, you unlock a boost meter that'll allow you to speed up and go faster. You can also earn points by doing certain things in a race, like drifting, jumping, and taking shortcuts, to name a few. The race tracks are fine, but they're pretty uninspiring and somewhat lazy, because each race you partake in feels like you've already driven through this section many times before, and it feels repetitive. And in some cases, races can be very similar when you're basically doing the same race again, but in reverse. Like with Radiator Springs Grand Prix and Sally's Sunshine Circuit, for example. 
it's just the same goddamn race as before, and again, it does come back to how void the open world map design is. I do however enjoy some of the layouts to racetracks and the sandbox map the game offers, like how you have to jump past a huge gap in Taflon Pass. <laughs> the camera angle is something I'm not a fan of here. You have three different types to where the camera blazes itself, but I think it's either placed too close, too far away, or this weird first person mode which really got me dizzy. But let's talk about power sliding. For some strange reason, the power sliding in Cars the video game is very inconsistent. Sometimes it'll work and other times it won't. How is it that the power sliding works just fine in these segments, but in a turn like this one? It seems like the power sliding just gave up and didn't want to cooperate with me. I tried power sliding so many times here and yet it didn't work once for me. So every time I come up to this part, I have to now slow down using my brakes so I don't end up crashing. But that's not how a fast paced racing game should be played. How it should be is drifting from corner to corner using your skills to the best of your ability as you accelerate to the finish line. But how can I do that if power sliding is kaput? Hey Sally, give us a kiss! And at times, this game does feel pretty easy, but I'm not going to complain about it too much here because it is a harmless game made for kids and trying to discuss it while being an adult seems pointless. But yeah, if you're pretty advanced in racing games, then you'll have zero issues here. I mean, you'll practically feel like a god in Cars the video game as you win a race by 30 to 40 seconds in front. The only sense of challenge I felt was in the Mater race, but as soon as you understand the layout and once you're in first, the challenge is immediately removed. But you wanna know something that's weird? Check out these statistics. Oh, st statistics. Is it statistics? Statistics. So, am I even pronouncing that right? So, I actually came second, believe it or not, but the time looked off to me. So, this car that ended up being first got a time of 5 minutes and 34.62 seconds. And I came in second, but I however got a time of 5 minutes and 34 and 61 seconds. But yet I ended up placing in second place. That is some weird Matrix shit going on around here, but anyhow, let's continue on and holy Jesus! What is that? What kind of face is Lightning McQueen making here? It's like he couldn't hold on anymore and McQueen decided to nut. <clears throat> so, um... How do cars actually do it? Well, I don't know, but do you know what they can do? Crash into objects and bump around like you're in Gmod Idiot Box. Yeah, I don't get the whole crash physics here in this game. It just looks very unrealistic, and it's something I can't imagine when I think about cars crashing into areas. Bouncing around like bumper cars smashing into one another is what it looks like to me. There's many other racing games that do crash physics well. For example, here's Crash Team Racing Nitro Fields crashing, here's Sonic Team Racing crashing, and now here's Cars the Video Game crashing. Other than that, you do have mini games to complete, like Mater's Tractor Tipping, which is surprisingly fun to join in. You also have Luigi fighting his tires, and you have Soldier's Challenge Course to name a few. I would say that I like the mini games here. It brings a nice change of pace, so instead of racing all the time, you can just relax and enjoy some downtime. I personally like the high speed heist as the music fitted the mini game well, and you have to avoid the traffic even though the traffic can be bizarre at times. Grab lightning stuff, okay, sounds easy enough. Ow! Oh, don't get caught by anything else. Gee, thanks game, you could have told me that before I got fucking hit. Let's talk about the music here. The soundtrack sounds fine and it does get you pumped up as you race. It seems the music they chose is pop rock and I'll admit it's not my personal favorite type of music as I enjoy a more heavier style of rock, but it's not a big deal. But what? is a big deal is that there is no life is a highway. I mean, come on, it was one of the best songs in the movie and not being able to have it means I can't jam out to it. But I will admit, 
there is at least one song here that I do enjoy. But yeah, if that song sounds very familiar to you, then maybe this game will help jog your memory. Uh, like I said, the PS2 emulation is still a work in progress. Hey Fillmore, where are my drugs? <laughs> Once getting enough trophies, you'll be eligible to partake in the speedways. Since the king has retired, the rivalry moves over to Chick vs Lightning. You both go back and forth on which one's going to end up winning the whole series and surprise surprise, Lightning McQueen ends up winning the Piston Cup. It does feel boring going around in circles, but there are only five in the entire game, so I can't get fully mad at it. And plus the atmosphere with cars in the audience and the announcing from Daryl Car Trip does make it a bit special. You have your fuel meter on the side and once it nearly runs out, you have to make your way to the pit stop and Guido will help fix Lightning up. The faster you succeed, the more you'll be ahead of your competition. So that's pretty much what story mode has to bring to the table. Of course, in arcade, you can play in races and mini games at any given time, and you can also play in multiplayer. But hey, since I'm playing cars on my computer and since I have zero friends, I can use my controller and my keyboard at the same time. A win-win scenario from my point of view. I guess the last thing to mention is, well, how do I explain this? I don't know if it's my copy or the emulation's fault, but I received a lot of glitches. Some cars clipping into items, areas don't fully load up correctly, that sort of thing. But I'm not sure if I'll consider it as a bad thing. The glitches are absolutely hilarious and honestly one of the best parts about cars the video game. Hey Flo, how's it going? <laughs> Holy fucking shit! Now. Ladies and gentlemen, with the fusion of Lightning McQueen and Flo, we have this abomination. Okay, that, that's it. That, I, I'm done with this game. I think this is the perfect way to end off this review, so I mean, I'm just gonna get to the verdict. So after replaying this game for what feels like a long time, I can report that this game didn't exactly age very well. I can appreciate the voice acting and the in-game cutscene animations are nicely done. It does capture the Disney feel, but in all seriousness, this is an average and somewhat unexciting racing game. It's a bit tough for me to say that, but nostalgia has to be thrown out the window if I want to come up with a clear conclusion. The open world is not that great, the controls can feel from playable to frustrating, and the races feel too similar compared to each other. But for a kid's game, it's pretty decent, and if you have any children of your own, then this game is a good start to get them introduced to racing video games. But having said that, there are plenty of other racing games worth giving attention to than this game. So with that said, I'm going to be giving Disney Pixar Cars the video game a score of 5 out of 10. It's not the worst racing game I've played, but I have played other racing games that do have much more value and more replayability rather than this game. But I am glad I was able to play this game back in the day and enjoyed it for what it was when I was a child. Like a tiny squeaky little, little, little boy. But anyways, thank you for watching this review, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the links will be down in the description box below. My name is Cheese and Crackers, telling you to keep calm, and keep playing video games.